sweeter name than that name, folks, to sing about. That's the name above every name. Turn the book of Revelation, chapter 1, with me tonight, please. Revelation, chapter number 1. Revelation, chapter 1, verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel to his servant John, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. And blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand carefully, John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you in peace from him which is, and which was, and which is to come, and from the seven spirits which are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, and to the prince of the kings of the earth, and to him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. <coughs> and made us, made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. And they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. And then finally in verse 8, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. Father, bless this holy book now. In Jesus' sweet holy name I pray, Father. Thank you for the privilege. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the privilege to stand for you and speak your word. In thy holy name, amen. You can be seated. The book of Revelation is unquestionably the most controversial book in all the Bible. There are many churches that never opened the book of Revelation. As a matter of fact, they tried to get people, uh, they, they discouraged them from studying the book of Revelation, from reading it. They say it's a closed book. They, of course, have no reference for that. There's no word of God anywhere to tell you the book of Revelation is closed. It's the only book in the Bible that promises a blessing to those who read it, who uh, receive from God what he intends for you to have. The book of Revelation is the consummation of Scripture. It closes the canon. The reason for the book of Revelation is apparent right off the bat. The Lord Jesus Christ was crucified at the cross of Calvary. Many of them watched him die. Uh, and he appeared after his resurrection at one time to over 500 brethren, according to 1 Corinthians 15. The only ones that ever saw him after his resurrection were true believers. But then he ascended into heaven, folks. He was at the right hand of the Father, there seated in might and glory and power and majesty and honor. They wanted to know what he was. Where is he? What's he doing now? What does he look like? And the book of Revelation begins to open up for you who Christ is now, his glory, his majesty. Chapter number one talks about a man with a hair white as snow, eyes red as fire, his whole countenance shining as the noonday sun, feet as fine brass. When he speaks, it is the voice of many waters. To look at that and compare it with the book of Daniel, you'll find out that he is the ancient of days. That's why he's called the Almighty in Revelation chapter number one and verse number eight. He's God Almighty manifested to creation. The Lord Jesus Christ is the Creator, and He's all the creation knows right now about the majesty of God. Until the time comes when that eternal, absolute, almighty being that dwells in a light that no man can see, no man hath seen, nor can see, abides in His own glory, in His majesty, and His power. Until that day comes when He shines forth for the creation to see Him, the only thing we know of God is our Lord Jesus Christ. But that's enough to know of Him, for He is God manifest in the flesh. 1 Timothy 3, verse number 16, without controversy, greats the mystery of godliness, God was manifest in the flesh. Revelation chapter number 1 and verse number 5 tells you right off the bat what it's about. It says, He hath washed us from our sins in His own blood. It tells you in the book of Revelation, therefore, that sin has been taken care of by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no other thing that can wash your sins away but the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. That blood is still in existence. That blood is at the right hand of the Father. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews that he entered in one time by his own blood into the presence of Almighty God. The blood of Jesus Christ did not fall to the ground, passed away and exists no more and only represented the life and death of Christ as some heretics are trying to tell you. 
The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ is a living reality at the right hand of the Father that is there to cleanse every single sin of every sinner that comes for forgiveness from Almighty God. the earth empty, and maketh it waste, and turneth it upside down, and scattereth abroad the inhabitants thereof. And it shall be, as with the people, so with the priest, as with the servant, so with his master, as with the maid, so with her mistress, as with the buyer, so with the seller, as with the lender, so with the borrower, as with the taker of usury, so with the giver of usury to him. The land shall be utterly emptied and utterly spoiled. For the Lord has spoken this word. The earth mourneth and fadeth away. The world languisheth and fadeth away. The haughty people of the earth do languish. The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof, because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore hath the curse devoured the earth and they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned, and few men left. The new wine mourneth, the vine languisheth, all the merry-hearted do sigh. The mirth of temperance ceaseth, the noise of them that rejoice endeth, the joy of the harp ceaseth. They shall not drink wine with a song, strong drink shall be bitter to them that drink it. The city of confusion is broken down, every house is shut up, that no man may come in. There is a crying for wine in the streets, all joy is darkened, the mirth of the land is gone. In the city is left desolation, and the gate is smitten with destruction. When thus it shall be in the midst of the land among the people, there shall be as the shaking of an olive tree, and as the gleaning grapes when the vintage is done. They shall lift up their voice, they shall sing for the majesty of the Lord, they shall cry aloud from the sea. Wherefore glorify ye the Lord in the fires, even the name of the Lord God of Israel in the isles of the sea. From the uttermost part of the earth have we heard songs, even glory to the righteous. But I said, my leanness, my leanness, woe unto me. The treacherous dealers have dealt treacherously. Yea, the treacherous dealers have dealt very treacherously. Fear and the pit and the snare are upon thee, O inhabitant of the earth. And it shall come to pass that he who fleeth from the noise of the fear shall fall into the pit, and he that cometh up out of the midst of the pit shall be taken in the snare. For the windows from on high are open, and the foundations of the earth do shake. The earth is utterly broken down, the earth is clean dissolved, the earth is moved exceedingly. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard, and shall be removed like a cottage, and the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it, and it shall fall and not rise again. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall punish the host of the high ones that are on high, and the kings of the earth upon the earth. And they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit, and shall be shut up in the prison, and after many days shall they be visited. Then the moon shall be confounded, and the sun ashamed, when the Lord of hosts shall reign in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, and before his ancients gloriously.